Hello, uh, thanks for joining for this uh, uh, talk about Project Alvarium. So this is a, a, a topic that I think is super important um, as we increasingly see connected systems out there and you know, whether it's driven from IoT or, or the automation of data uh, through AI and um, you know, 5G, just all, a lot of the trends that are, that are having to converge right now. So kind of give you an overview of the project and, and I'll stay in advance. Uh, definitely go and check out the um, uh, the demo at uh, the virtual expo. We've got a couple of different demos within uh, that uh, forum. So, um, you know, I'll start with a little bit of background. Uh, you know, my, uh, for me, it, you know, I've, I've been working in Linux Foundation for quite a while, um, you know, initially with EdgeX Foundry, and then I uh, uh, helped bootstrap LF Edge. I'm now the governing board chair for LF Edge. I'm working on IoT and edge computing for quite some time. VP of Ecosystem at Zadita today. Previously, I was the IoT and Edge CTO at Dell Technologies. My motto is, if, if it's fuzzy, I'm on it. Um, you know, I play music. Obviously, this is my studio uh, here in Austin slash office. Um, at the same time, I, I joke that in Austin, they just give all that stuff to you when you move here because it's you know, a big music town. So, you know, that's a little bit about me. Um, you know, where we're seeing things headed, you know, IoT drove, drove a lot more data on networks. We're still seeing, you know, that trend emerge. Edge computing is, is a big topic right now because we have so much data on uh, networks. There's, there's so much data, you can't possibly pump it out of the cloud. So we're seeing this, this uh, notion of the pendulum kind of swinging back towards uh, edge. Doesn't mean the cloud's going away. In fact, it's gonna continue to grow, but it's this symbiotic relationship between edge and cloud. You know, reasons include latency and, and um, uh, bandwidth savings, uh, autonomy, uh, security, privacy, you abstract personal information as close to the source as possible. But as these things emerge and, and kind of continue to grow, the ultimate potential is interconnecting different ecosystems uh, across uh, public and private entities and, and the consumer and, and uh, you know, manufacturing and retail and energy and whatnot. And for that to happen at scale, it's really important to build confidence into the data itself. And so Alvarium is focused on this notion of trust fabrics. And you know, I've said for a while, uh, uh, fixed is the new mobile. We're gonna see more and more compute everywhere, which is uh, you know, the ambient compute, uh, computing um, uh, concept. Uh, you know, so as I mentioned, the ultimate potential is that all of these different uh, forums or, or um, kind of venues of, of consumer experiences and, and enterprises are all interconnected over time. And you know, how do you cross over between these? Of course, we've seen retail cross over into the home through like the, uh, an Amazon, but you know, there's a lot of other retailers out there. We, we see you know, smart cities evolving, but then there's that kind of balance of privacy with citizens and the services that are offered from those uh, cities. And so you know, long story short, it's, it's how do you go drive new business models and experiences from interconnecting all these different environments. There's a data monetization study. So when I was at Dell, we did this with uh, Futurum, uh, an analyst firm, and, and we did a data monetization story. Of course, you know, it's not just about data monetization, but it's a big trend. And it was interesting because we found initially, I thought it was gonna be all like chief marketing officer or, or you know, digital officer, but it's actually you know, predominantly, of course, C, uh, CEO, but predominantly the CIO. And you know they're concerned about that underlying um, technology stack. These are this was about 500 uh, uh, companies of different sizes that we had interviewed, uh, and 70 percent said they're monetizing you know data today. But you know it's definitely a C-suite conversation. Interestingly, we asked how are you going to monetize your data, and it was like almost perfect order of relinquishing control or putting trust into you know other folks in a broader environment. So number one was you know the, the big blue on the top right. I'm not going to sell my data. I'm going to leverage that data to, to improve um, you know, my, my goods and services and whatnot. Well, I'll license it, I'll offer a subscription, you know, do like for like data exchange. And eventually it gets to this notion of data marketplaces, that smaller orange sliver up top. And that's, those are growing and that's where we see the ultimate potential where I can just kind of send my data out into the ether and start collecting checks from strangers. But for that to happen, you have to attach confidence you know, to that data you know, and it has to be trusted as it flows across different networks. And so a lot of these barriers are very related to 
you know, uh, security, of course, compliance, privacy, you know, what do people think about this notion of, of um, you know, data, their data being used? A lot of people today don't even understand how, how much their data is being used uh, already. Um, but, you know, even better is if you can uh, have a mechanism where you take control over where you lie on the privacy versus value equation. Uh, value received, you'll usually give up a little privacy if it makes sense. Um, but you are in control and then, you know, you kind of decide uh, from there where you, uh, where you go. Uh, you know, just these are all the kind of focus areas for Project Alvarium is addressing these types of, of blockers. So there's multiple reasons that, that trust is essential as, as we scale out different uh, technologies. Um, you know, number one, it's, it's this notion of interconnecting ecosystems, driving new business models. Uh, number two, it's, it's, you know, how do I maintain privacy? How do I, you know, I mean, <laughs> challenging coming is this notion of fake data generated by AI at, at massive scale. You know, so you have to combat AI with AI and, and you need to build trust into that, that data. Uh, GDPR is a, is a big challenge. You know, other compliance requirements are, are popping up. And, you know, I don't know if you know, like GDPR, the right to be forgotten, you basically say, hey, I want my privacy back, you know, I want my data back. To, uh, and the companies that had collected this data and were using it for whatever reason have to go find it everywhere and, and um, you know, delete it basically. And, and uh, this notion of trust fabrics, we think that this become, becomes more automated over time. The other thing that's interesting when you talk about edge computing is that workloads tend to, uh, in the cloud, you kind of out of sight, out of mind, you might not really think about where they're running. I mean, sometimes you, of course, you want to have a, a, a private cloud. But at the edge, when people can see the infrastructure and, and you have different groups that are, you know, whether it's inside or outside your organization, you know, that logically you want to share infrastructure, but then there's this perception of your data getting uh, uh, cordoned off to, to other you know, people and your IP getting lost or whatnot. And, and so building trust in how different applications or workloads run on common infrastructure is, is a key, especially at the edge because of that psychology uh, aspect. And so to do this, the way you make it uh, trust work across this you know, heterogeneous ecosystem, different networks, different um, environments and businesses and consumers is you make it to where nobody owns the trust. Uh, typically, you know, uh, you know, consumer, you, you build trust with certain entities and as long as you trust them, whether it's a, a Google or a Amazon or an Apple or, or whatever, you tend to give up a little privacy, but to get to that interconnected ecosystem uh, vision, you, you can't have it to where one company, you know, owns that, uh, that trust in, in the broader scheme of things. So, the other thing is people are like, oh, we'll just put blockchain on. Blockchain will solve the problem. But the reality is that blockchain tells you where data's been you know, with smart contracts, but it doesn't necessarily tell you that data is trusted. And so what we're talking about here is a system level approach to trust where you combine starting in silicon, you know, root of trust to that hardware, uh, you know, open APIs, trusted operating systems, uh, confidential computing, so you're processing data even encrypted, you know, in motion so that at all times data is, data is encrypted. Um, you know, mutable storage, you can't tamper with the data, the hash values won't match. A distributed ledger, of course, is, is a component, but it's this layering of trust insertion technologies that make it um, more holistic in nature, and then, of course, you span different environment. So, Alvarium is, you know, open project, uh, you know, uh, that we're spinning up within uh, LF Edge. Um, you know, this notion of layerings of trust uh, insertion technologies. We're working on building a reference architecture that brings in various components, both within LF Edge and uh, you know other projects in uh, Linux Foundation and, and externally as well. This isn't about reinventing the trust insertion technologies. Think of Alvarium as a framework that binds together these loose, loosely coupled technologies. Uh, into a uh, an overall system that drives uh, data confidence, and so um, you know, as mentioned, this this project emerging. Uh, we're not not reinventing uh, Dell Technologies. I'd, I'd actually led the incubation at, at uh, Dell. We work closely with IOTA Foundation, also with uh, with Intel and, and a variety of other companies. And you know, a number of uh, companies are coming in as well, like ARM and and. Uh, um, it's just a broad community of folks you know, from Silicon uh, up that uh, you know, think this is a you know, really important trend. And as I said, we're creating the, the APIs, this open framework, there's an SDK associated with it. 
and and then the the scoring is is the key. So as data flows through, you get uh, say points for every uh, trust insertion uh, technology that that data passes through, and so that that scoring of confidence uh, as data flows through provides that boundary condition as, as you flow through your trust fiber can have someone else's that you can decide is that worth having that exchange you know whether it's monetizing data or driving some sort of new service or, or otherwise um, that confidence gives you you know uh, the ability to act on it you know maybe i only need 80 percent confidence in data if i'm doing something non-critical but if i'm you know doing something in a nuclear power plant i'm going to want like 100 percent confidence and and um, you know, again, this is about collaborating with other industry efforts. There's a video at alvarium.org that, um, you know, I would uh, recommend uh, checking out. I uh, won't go through the whole video, but it's about four minutes. And the, the key here is, is everything's interconnected in the end. And, you know, Alvarium is actually uh, Latin for uh, beehive. And that's why these are all um, hexagons. And, you know, kind of these interconnected bees work together in, in a community. And the, the whole idea here is that trust fabrics start to intersect each other in these, all these different environments, uh, public and private. And at that boundary condition is where that confidence score is engaged. And based on policies you set on, on your privacy versus value that you want to receive, um, you can act on that without having a, a person in the middle of it to, to make that exchange. And, and we built this, uh, this video, you know, it talks about smart homes, of course, you know, again, that was smart city. And this notion of, as it spans out into the broader uh, scenario, you know, crossing between these different environments, is we think that there's this opportunity for uh, service providers for service providers. You know, think of yourself, you know, if you're a, a telco operator, you, you could broker trusted data across uh, all of these different forums and, you know, because you've disaggregated the data, you can actually monetize your infrastructure without trying to own the data. Um, having single owners of data that broker for everybody, it, it doesn't really work at scale. Um, you can't have a few companies uh, own that long term. It's like having one company that owns the internet. So this notion of brokering uh, trusted data across different environments you know, with this fabric concept um, is you know, a, a key element of this this effort. So the video goes through like how you know these these work. I mean, they're they're certainly reference examples. This UI was we, we built just to to help kind of make the concept tangible. Um, but anyway, it, it goes through a variety of things. So definitely recommend you know checking that out. I mentioned the different types of trust insertion technologies, um, spanning you know the the devices themselves up through the software stacks, that core infrastructure, and then eventually getting it into a ledger. And, um, you know, it's important to insert this trust as close to the source as possible. And that's also why we think this project, you know, why we thought it was important to have it uh, be part of LF Edge, given the, the focus of that community. So, you know, as you go from maybe an edge gateway to an edge server and eventually get to the cloud, as, as these different trust insertion technologies stack on top of each other, you're increasing the confidence as it flows through. So this is a, a fairly simple example. It's going to be more uh, um, involved than, than shown here, but it just gives you kind of this uh, flow of increasing trust built through um, networks. A common question is, doesn't this uh, put a lot of tax on on the hardware. Um, of course, we're seeing more and more capable compute coming in, in uh, by the day, you know, co-processing. Um, so there's there's that capability. If you can add value to data because it's you have confidence in it, you can also justify that the expense on compute. But then you also don't have to do calculations at every point along the way. It could be at the boundary of, of your organization. So there's various different things that we'll be working through as a community. Um, so IOTA got involved. It's not that, that this is about one uh, ledger technology, but, but IOTA, uh, we uh, got involved early on. Uh, very, very efficient um, algorithms for uh, ledger, their, their Tangle uh, technology. And so we've done prototypes of how um, you, you register the data coming out of uh, those annotations for confidence onto uh, you know, the ledger you're using the, the Tangle. Uh, so if you go over to the demo uh, area in the, the expo, you'll see um, some early examples of how data is annotated and also how things are registered on, on the ledger. And um, of course, we'll be growing it from there as part of the community. 
know, as I mentioned, this isn't about reinventing things. There's a lot of good efforts, great efforts focused on um, trust, trust in data. What's different with Alvarium is that system level approach. You know, the fact that it's it's down to silicon, you know, it's these layerings of technologies close to when data is generated. And then these other efforts tend to be focused more on how you share data you know, through smart contracts and what is the, 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 the semantics around that sharing, uh, you know, you know, broader speaking. So, so these types of efforts are very complementary to Alvarium and we've been you know, reaching out and chatting with some different folks and, and certainly uh, welcome collaboration as part of the Alvarium community of how do we kind of stitch all this stuff together in a, in a broader system level sense. So yeah, I'll close by saying, I mean, it, we think this is a really exciting project. We certainly welcome you to get involved. Uh, you can learn a lot more about the project at alvarium.org. Uh, as I mentioned, check out the OANES demo uh, in the virtual expo and, and you'll see there's a short presentation on just, just similar to uh, you know, kind of a shorter version of what I did here today, but then also the demos. Um, you know, whether you want to learn about it or do you want to get involved as we spin it up as an official project um, within the community, uh, we certainly welcome it and uh, look forward to um, you know, this, this you know, working together on this important topic for where things are headed you know, longer term. So hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. And again, thanks for having me.